Well, <laughs> I don't care what Rich Little says. If you've got a stage weight, that'll fill it as good as anything. You know, yesterday morning, I spoke a great deal about the spirit of the American people, that America will prevail because that spirit is strong. But for Nancy and me, there are some other very special people whose spirit has made the past few days the very best of our lives. Charlie Wick and Bob Gray, and why don't you step right up here right now? Charles. Bob. And I know that with them, and they'd be the first to say, hundreds and hundreds of helpers, many of you, gave of themselves to make the inaugural ceremonies outstanding. Uh, I had a little batch of phone calls to make today, and uh, a number of them were out of the country. You might be interested to know that one of the prime ministers I spoke to said that their whole nation watched our inaugural. And they said the reaction was, there will never again be one like it. <laughs> now, so that, that is due to Charlie and Bob and their helpers, and Mary Jane, I think, was very much a part of Bob, and all of that helped full time. Yes. Now, as one who went to all the balls last night, uh, I can attest to the fact that the guests who came to Washington, in addition to not finding any dancing room, uh, or in spite of that, they were caught up as we were in a time of great happiness and expectation. And those things don't happen by accident. It takes people who are devoted, it takes creative people and patient people. And I know what all of you who worked on this went through in these past few weeks. I know the kind of responsibilities you had. I know the multiple problems that descended on these two who were in charge. And let me say that there may be many toasts raised recently, but it's whether we've got a glass in our hand or not, it is time to toast the inaugural committee for a job well done and for gratitude that is well deserved. And again, I know that I would have the agreement of these chairmen back here when I say there is another group connected with this, perhaps not specifically of the committee, but we couldn't, or they couldn't have done it without them, and that's the group that through their generosity made possible with their resources, as well as their time, to make January 20th a very special day. And I want you to know that this morning, General, how are you? It's wonderful to see you here. General Bradley. God bless you. And I want you to know that there just, there wasn't a minute off. We finally got home last night after making the full round. And just like that little girl, that nine-year-old girl with her letter said this morning, I got up and went to the Roval office and went to work. <laughs> That's what she told me to do, and, and I did it. Well, God bless you all, and now, no, enough of this. We're going to get down and mingle. Say, um, say, you, you know, those of you who were at the balls all last night, I was giving you rundowns on another situation. As you know, there are certain rather adversary proceedings that are going on up on the hill these days, and I thought you might be interested to know that General Alexander Haig was ratified by the Senate today, 93 to 6. 